Well, I'm, I'm not a Byron. All right, welcome everybody to uh, Grace Believers Bible Study. I just first want to say that uh, Byron and Carol are uh, out, uh, a little under the weather, but they're getting better, so I would anticipate we're going to see them next week. I would bet that they're watching us. What do you think? Maybe Byron, because he's got his checklist of things uh, that we can or can't do, right? Um, so anyways, uh, I'm going to take the first uh, service, and Dave's got the second one, the longer one, the important one. So we'll try and keep you entertained for the first uh, 45 minutes or so. Uh, I told Byron the other day when, when I was chatting with him, he said, what are you going to teach? What are you going to teach? You know, you pull something out of a hat real quick, it kind of locks you down. But I thought I would address again how uh, America's outlined in uh, Romans uh, 1. And uh, if you take a look at Romans 1, 18 to 32, uh, we're kinda, that's kind of going to be the home base, and we're going to follow along with that. Uh, there'll be a few times we jump outside of that. But it's, uh, it's kind of interesting. It's not just for America. It's also for any nation or any group of folks that are out there. You kind of see how they progress from kind of a God-fearing uh, a group of people to not so much anymore. And I believe that's kind of where America and most countries are at today is, is in that lower verse at verse 32. So we'll try and make some sense of this as we're going through it. Uh, but before we get started, just a quick little prayer. God, we love you. We love you, Abba Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. And we just thank you for the opportunity to share time with uh, other believers, uh, fellow believers, uh, like believers, and uh, talk about you and, and how we go about being saved and how we go about being edified. I just ask you to anoint this message so it would be meaningful and hopefully somebody hears it and uh, would be saved by that. And if they're saved already that they might be edified by it. We love you and thank you. It's in the blessed name of Jesus we pray. Amen. All right. I know I said home base is going to be uh, Romans 1, but I'd like to jump over to Genesis. Pretty easy to find. <coughs> and we're going to start in chapter 1. I haven't said anything. How can you have a question? All right. Go ahead. It's America in Romans 1, verses 18 to 32. Maybe the fall, the fall of America, the fall of other countries. I've done this before. It'll kind of make sense, some of these things you've heard of before. Uh, Genesis 1, uh, we're going to go to verse 26 and 27. Now before I start with this, I'd like to say God can save anyone in any walk at any place. I don't care if there's an L, a G, a B, a T, uh, a, a cussing, a jail. It doesn't matter. If he finds a person at the right point and they trust, where we go with that marker? Let me get this up here. Trust that Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins. So he died for sins. I'm going to put that right there in a circle. He was buried and he was resurrected on the third day. And when you believe that, that counts as justification. That's all you need to know to be saved today is that Jesus Christ died for your sins, that he was buried for you, and he was resurrected on the third day for you. And when you believe and trust that, and that alone, he justifies you. So now it's not that he paid for your sins. Now it's as if you never had a sin to start with. That's a free gift. Because the wages of sin is death. But the free gift. Anybody? Romans 6, 26. Free gift. It's a free gift. You can't work for a gift. That's all you have to do to be saved today during this uh, revelation of the mystery. Oh, sorry about that. Blue blockers. You should have done that before I embarrassed myself. Go ahead, Daniel. Hey, 
the book says it, I believe it, and I trust it. It's not an emotional high, it's not an emotional low, it simply is, do you trust it? Do you have faith in that and that alone? And if you do, that's it, you're saved. This is all, uh, for any of the new ones, particularly Douglas, uh, uh, that's in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4, uh, Romans 4 and 25. Those are our two primary verses, which you'll see on our, our little handouts, the red handouts that we have. Pretty simple today. A lot of other people are going to take the work ethic and say you need to work for your righteous. Well, that's self-righteousness, and that doesn't work today. All right, starting with Genesis 1, verse 26 and 27. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion. Interesting. And let them have dominion. Now, he hasn't even broke it down and said man and woman yet. He's just getting ready to make Adam. That just kind of a little interesting thing there. Have dominion over the fish in the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So you know what? Adam must have owned everything. Twenty seven. So God created and this is where I'm getting at, so God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him male female created he them is there is there any other thing in that verse that says something other than man or woman that, that this this is god's word this is not my word this is god's word that says this go ahead it, it has more to do with uh spirit soul and body it's not about us looking exactly like it was the way they were set up. That was that was that was impl- and when, when Adam was created, he immediately had a connection with the Lord. He didn't get saved; he was born saved. As as people have said before, and I got to give credit to other people in other churches, he was uh, born without a belly button. little thing happened in uh, chapter 3. Little, yeah, yeah. That, that was bad, you know. First Eve took it, and then, uh, then he took it, and that's exactly what they weren't supposed to do. So they lived outside the garden after that, and it was not good after that. Well, I, I, I believe that they did, because the rules changed. Basically, do not partake of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That was the one rule. Everything else, you're saved. Once you got outside of the garden, it turned into sacrificing your very best and having faith in God. That, that was the rule set, and that went on all the way through Noah, pretty much that. And then you find out Cain didn't bring the best that he had. He went and got some stuff out of the cursed earth, whereas Abel had his best lamb. And, and you see what happened, and Cain didn't like that, and he whacked Abel over the head. All right, let's move over to uh, Genesis 3.8. Just uh, maybe a page to the right. Genesis 3 and 8. This is kind of setting up the foundation before we jump into uh, Romans. Everybody there? Shouldn't have been a lot of page turning. Otherwise, you're, you may be in Exodus. Well, he, he gave them the indication, about verse 20 to 22, it's going to say he provided skins to replace the fig leaves. The skins meant that an animal had to die to cover sin. Well, he's giving them an indication how in the future that they would take care of a sin, and that would be through the blood of an animal, an innocent animal. Which was, I'm going to go get something out of the ground, and I'm going to make. 
and obviously, and obviously God was not happy. Plus, the earth was cursed, was it not? All right, Genesis 3 and 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Well, this is something obviously to happen every single day while they were in the garden, right? But we're in Genesis 3. They, part, they partook of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And it goes on. I like, like to put in there, but this time it was different. And Adam and his wife, Adam and his wife, hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And if you've read this before, you kind of know where this is going. All right, we're going to go back one page to Genesis 2. We're going to cover verses 24 and 25. And then that should be it in Genesis. Genesis 2, starting at verse 24. Right there. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Man and woman. Man and wife. Just nailing down what, what God has said. God said this, this is what's in his book. I didn't make the rules on this. And again, I'm going to stress, God can save anybody at any walk. It doesn't matter what mess they're in. If he could save me, if he could save Saul, that murderous, he can save anybody. But they have to want to be saved, and they have to do it through his gospel, the gospel of the grace of God. This is kind of a little interesting thing while we're driving over here. If you, if you count the letters to get to G, the gospel, the grace of God, what number do you come up with? Probably means nothing. 777. Seven, seven. That's just an interesting thing. Anyway, I don't know if it means anything. Sylvie said that was deep. So uh, Let's move over to Ephesians 5. Now maybe she thought I was digging a deep hole and I was going to jump in it. Ephesians 5, verse 31 and 32. Just show you that Paul does a repeat on one of these things here. 31. We good, Gloria? All right. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Sound familiar? said back in Genesis and interestingly enough in Genesis it was to all people it wasn't just the Jew there basically uh, Genesis 1 up through the, about the end of 11 is for all humanity before he started to uh, chase after uh, the Hebrews I should say Abram 32 this is a great mystery but I speak concerning Christ and the church everybody good with that all right we're moving over to Romans <coughs> Romans 1. We're going to kind of set up a timeline of what happened to America. Romans 1, uh, the actual verse that was going to start at was 18, but I'm going to jump back to 16 for some perspective. 18, or sorry, 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Of course, we know today it's the gospel, the grace of God. All right? For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by working. Faith. Is that it? That's exactly what it is. It's just by faith. All right, starting with 18. I just I put a little note here. Keep an eye on the pronouns. This is interesting as we're working our way through there. When he talks about unbelievers, it's always going to be them, theirs. It's very specific about how he's outlining it. It says, for the wrath of God, and this is going to be the wrath that happens at the start of the seven-year tribulation, is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men 
who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So they actually knew what the gospel was? Wow. 19. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. I'm going to read a little something out of the, uh, the Declaration of Independence to kind of set that up for you. So we're back going to uh, 1776. Everybody good with that? Uh, it's actually going to be in the second paragraph, but I'm going to start in the first for context. It says, when in the course of human events, does this sound familiar? Hopefully people have heard this before. And we're getting ready to celebrate it pretty soon. It becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which entail them to the separation. Did you imagine writing like that today? That sounds flowery. Now, this is the one we all kind of recited when we were back in school. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator. Didn't say government. It said creator. Now, these were, these were the founding fathers that were putting this down. Now, you can't tell me they didn't believe in God. They wouldn't have put this down. In fact, a lot of people say that, uh, you know, Jefferson was a deist. Well, he's the one who wrote this. Now, a number of his quotes do refer to the Almighty and whatnot. You know, but they love to pull out Jefferson and, uh, and Franklin and use them as examples. But uh, here it says, by their creator, with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, you have the right to live. That kind of goes against something, doesn't it? I know something pops in my mind, and I hope that that uh, actual case is going to be announced fairly soon. Liberty, the freedom to choose, and the pursuit of happiness. Those aren't given by the government. Those are given by God. Those are things in America that you're given by God. This is what they believe. This is what America was at their point. Now, 100% of the people, I get it. You've got a couple of odd ducks that are in, in the group. I get that. But the majority believed in God. You know, on average, they would read their Bibles one to two hours a day. Now, granted, they don't have their flat face TVs and their cell phones and all the other stuff back then, but they would spend an hour to two hours in their Bibles. A little bit of uh, paragraph three that to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men derive their just powers from the consent of the governed. That is you and me in here. Anyways, that was to show you that uh, they believe in God. Good luck finding that in government today. I, I mean, they will say at the end, you know, and, and may God bless you and bless you nice. Do they mean that? I'd like to think they would, but that's about the only time you hear about it. All right, moving on to verse 20. For the invisible things of him, that would be God, that should be capital H in my book, from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, for those of you that may not be familiar with the, the Godhead, the Godhead is what a lot of people call the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Everybody all right with that? Now, is... Go ahead, Danny. Absolutely, and, and this is this is this is where you, this is where you take people when it comes time. And they say, "Well, I don't believe in God." And you go, "Have you looked around and saw what's growing? Have you looked to see 
how far the Earth is from the Sun? Have you looked to see how far the Moon is from the Earth? Have you looked to see how the tilt on the Earth gives seasons to every place on the Earth? Uh, with the exception of maybe if you had something planted on the North Pole or the South Pole. So, but, but look what he says here. He says, for the invisible things of him, God, and we know Jesus Christ is God and he's the one that did the creation. From the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made. Even as eternal power and his Godhead so that they, here we go with those pronouns, they. Anytime you see a pronoun that's not us, that's about unbelievers, are without excuse. And if we weren't saved today, if I wasn't saved today, I'd have no excuse either. I'd have no excuse because I've heard it plenty of times. I believe a lot of other people have heard it a lot of times and they just rejected it because they're on another mission. And once, once they said no to it, uh, the God of this world has blocked it. It's blocked that gospel. That's in that's in second that's in Second Corinthians four verses uh, three and four. Go ahead, Daniel. I agree. I agree. The best thing we best, the best thing we could do is turn the TV off. But I was raised on the TV. It's kind of hard to wean myself off it. So. There may be one or two channels that have something decent on it, right? At it, it, it any given moment? Right. No, I was going to say there's another show you've been watching recently. Uh, verse 21. It's not bad. It just... Verse 21. Because that, when they... Here we go to the pronouns again. When they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. Neither were they thankful... Neither were thankful, but if Carol was here, she would have busted me on that. Where are you, Carol? Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was dark. It's not that they didn't know the truth. They just rejected it because they had what they thought was a better plan. Now, what we're doing is we're, we're kind of we're going to work our way from 1776 up to the current we're going to hit certain things and kind of prove it out and depending on time we'll get a little deeper in some of this stuff. Uh, a couple of dates here. Uh, 1843 Mormon leader Joseph Smith said that God approved a polygamy. So God did that. 24 November 1859 Charles Darwin's the origin of species by means of natural selection was first published and all 1,250 copies sold the first day. Isn't that weird? It, 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 it blows my mind. It's kind of like all the folks that lived during that thousand years during the, the, the kingdom that's going to come. You know, all they knew was Jesus Christ, all those thousands of years. And then the devil gets released for a short period of time. And it's like the sands of the sea. They race up to Jerusalem to take on Jesus. After knowing nothing but Jesus Christ. Isn't that amazing? Could you imagine if you live with Jesus Christ in here the whole time? There'd be a couple people in here that probably... You know, when the devil came out and started to tempt them. Anyway, I digressed a little bit there. All right, let's move forward to uh, the 13th of April. I'm sorry, there's, there's going to be a couple of hits on the Pentecostals here, of which we were for 10 plus years. So, uh, Zusa Street Revival, uh, 13 April 1906. The mission which formed the, the nexus of the American Pentecostal movement officially began when the church services led by evangelist William J. Seymour moved into a building on Azusa Street in Los Angeles, California. Now, if anybody doesn't know, Pentecostals believe that the church started in Acts 2 at, at Pentecost. But the church that Paul started couldn't have started till Acts 13. And at the very beginning, it would be Acts 9. But 
he starts teaching what actually saves in Acts 13. Well, there's a problem there. And that's okay. That's why we learn to rightly divide things. And that's uh, in uh, 2 Timothy 2.15. I don't know if you're familiar with that study. To show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not be ashamed, rightly dividing the, the word of truth. And as we find out the word of truth, when you go to Ephesians 1 and 13, you'll find out that the word of truth is the gospel of our salvation. And the gospel of our salvation is that Jesus Christ died on that cross for our sins. He was buried. He was resurrected on the third day. And when we believe and trust that, and it is justification as if you've never sinned before. All right. One more in that category. Uh, 9 April 1909, the first recorded instance in America of groups speaking in tongues occurred in Los Angeles under the leadership of evangelist William J. Seymour. Again, this was under the Pentecost. This event marked the beginning of a three-year-long Azusa Street revival, key in the development of Pentecostal. It, and you go, well, what's the big deal? Speaking in tongues. Well, if you're speaking in tongues, you're following Mark 16. Mark 16 was how the Jews were to get saved, how the circumcision was to get saved, how some of the uh, Greeks were to get saved that were blessing, uh, blessing a Jew. That's not how we get saved. And if you're speaking in tongues to confirm that you're saved, you're in fact not saved. And I know, I know, I tried. I tried very hard to learn how to speak in tongues. I, I, if I could just get it going, maybe it was like a motorboat. I could get. And I would tell you, because know, you've got assigned a group person, you go in there. Well, have you spoken tongues yet? I am. I, I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm floating in there, but I, I have not. I can't. And you know, that's the best thing it, that never happened to me. You know, when you, you know, you, you know, when you pray for something and it doesn't happen, and you're like, ah. But later on, you find out, boy. Well, the lady that was kind of over top, you know, because they were signing uh, people in the church to certain people that had been there a long time. And she never said that to me, but, I mean, you can read between the lines on that one. <laughs> she was a very nice lady, but uh, I, uh, I'm afraid. There's a, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of people out there that love Jesus Christ. There's a lot of people out there that love God. There's a lot of people out there that are, are doing work, and they're at the church three, four, five days a week. But they do not know this. Or they know this, and they're adding things to it. And if you add something to this, it's no longer Jesus Christ that did the work. It's you that's trying to do the work. And your works are like filthy rags. Absolutely. It's the faith. And it's so simple. Isn't it? Okay, I'm, I'm going to digress and go to Second Corinthians. Well, the right person had to get in front of me and help chip off follow the law because there's, there's at least 10 or 12 things I was following that was preventing me from being saved by that. And that went on for years. I, in fact, I thought I was I was trying to teach people how to do those things. How ridiculous is that? Second uh, Corinthians, uh, I think, uh, chapter eleven. Well, I really hadn't put that together because I wasn't saved anyway. It, it was it, it was required where we went and then eventually eventually they had a, a moment and it took them a year year and a half to put together a teaching on how to kind of turn the ship on this particular issue and they apologized and said look we got this one wrong and uh, it's not a requirement to be saved 
It, but this was probably the first five years that was that was a requirement. And they would call it. That's not many documents that just got out of the Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, they, well, I'll give them. Well, I was up there, goo ga goo ga, but but they corrected that, and I got to give them kudos for that. They got that part corrected, but it took it took. It seemed like it was six months, eight months that they were teaching on this, and why what they were teaching seemed to be okay. And you know, they took this boat and they had everybody read this other book. Well, they had, should have had them read the the Bible to start with, but that's, anyways. Okay. 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 We we had that as well. Okay. Second uh, Corinthians eleven, and and this talked about the simplicity. I just want to put that out there. Verse three and verse four. Second Corinthians chapter eleven. Verse 3 and verse 4. And this is Paul talking to the Corinthians. He says, But I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve, of course that was in the garden, through his subtly, so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. For if he that cometh preacheth another Jesus, whom we have not, we have not preached, or if ye receive another spirit which ye have not received, or another gospel which ye have not accepted, ye might well bear with him who brings that false gospel or that perverted gospel. It talks a little bit of that in Galatians. You know, when we cover those verses over in Galatians 1, 8, 9. You know, if anybody teaches a false gospel, and, it, and he names off all these other things. If an angel or anybody else comes, let them be accursed. So whoever's teaching that, it's gonna, it's not gonna be good for them. Yes. Ninety-nine percent of all uh, religions, religions, teaching, uh, they don't have any of that stuff. I I can only go based on the places we've gone and the one ones we've watched on TV, and the numbers are not good. Other than Les Feldick, I really haven't come across anything where they're teaching what it takes to be saved. I, I mean, it's, the music's nice. They seem to be good people. Or they speak well. But they just refuse to put the gospel out there. And that's why I like it here. You're going to hear the gospel. It may get to the point where you don't want to hear the gospel anymore. But... If, if you're if you're saved, you should be going, yes, this is a confirmation that I, in fact, do believe the right thing. I do trust the right thing. I do have faith in the right thing. And you can go back and go, okay, I feel good. I feel good. All right, back to uh, Romans. Take some of the out of it. <laughs> yeah. I don't believe it. And then he comes back and I put your finger in there. We all have a little doubting Thomas in us every once in a while. All right, uh, Romans 1, verse 22. Again, here we go with the pronouns. Professing themselves to be wise, these are the unbelievers, they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. It's almost the opposite of the way things were created as God was going through. I, I think there was one or two of them that are kind of out of sorts. But let me let me get past this thing here, uh, and we're gonna go back to the, the Scopes Monkey Trial in 1925. There was a trial uh, in Tennessee, and basically there was a school biology class, and they were teaching evolution. And it was illegal in the state to teach that. So they got the ALCU involved in it. 
it, there was a lot of setup in this thing. It, it, it was about those people that didn't want God in schools to start with. They wanted evolution being taught. So this came to play. They took it to court. They lost it in court. And on a technicality, because the judge said pay a $100 fine instead of the jury paying a $100 fine, it gave an opportunity to take that up to the state Supreme Court. Now, after Bebop back and forth, uh, they went ahead and they just decided not to push any, any further. But the PR from the media and the paper got out to enough states that just it infected them. And that was the start of evolution being taught in schools. I mean, there were a couple others, but that was the real push to get God's creation out and get it was all an accident. And the prime, prime, primordial, primordial <coughs> soup. Go ahead, Danny. What they're trying to do is say that the United States started in, they want to start at 1619, and they want to say that basically America was corrupted before it even became a country. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, you know who was in charge of uh, America in 1619? England. And it stayed England up until 1776. And there was a bit of a war before that happened. So the premise of that is all BS. Very simple. Just you got to discount. But see, they're they're preying on people that don't know. Oh, we, oh yeah, what's the deal? Yeah, there were slaves and stuff back there. You know, maybe it started back then. England was in charge of the colonies until 1776, and it was only after they had gotten beat up and beat up and beat up. And believe it, one of the last things they were going to do. They were going to take the guns from the colonists. That was the last step. That was the last thing. We all think, well, it's the Boston Tea Party. No, that happened before that. The guns were the final thing. That was the final nail in the coffin. And then they did the Declaration of Independence. And if, if you've ever sat and read it, it outlines everything that King George had done to them. It's worth a read, particularly as we're rolling up to the 4th of, of July. It's a good thing to take a look at that. because. That is a foundational document to America, to the United States, whereas the Constitution is the law of the land. It had to have a foundation, kind of like Jesus Christ is our foundation. Well, the Declaration of Independence is the foundation, and the Constitution is the law of the land. You know, we didn't start with the Constitution. We actually started with what was called the Articles of Confederacy uh, in 1776, and that ran to... uh, 1789. They got the Constitution up and running in 87, but it had to be ratified by three quarters of the uh, state legislatures. But so the Constitution hasn't been with us all the good. Just a little bit more. What happened under the Articles of Confederacy was kind of a weak document. So people would take their goods from one state across the state to another state, uh, maybe a, a thing of cotton or something like that. And the state that was in between was saying, "Well, you need." need to pay us for using our roads to take that there and pay us to come back. Anyway, so they put teeth in the Constitution. It's not what the Founding Fathers wanted to do, but that's, that's where they ended up. So Scopes Monkey Trial, I'd go a little deeper in that, but for the sake of time, we're going to move on. Uh, finally, that uh, rendered verdict was in July of 1925. All right, Romans uh, 1 and 24. And this is interesting. Look who's doing the judging here. It says, Wherefore, God also gave them, there we go, that pronoun, up to uncleanness, to the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. That's male and female. So what I'm going to get to, uh, think about the hippies and the free love movement in the 60s. Remember, I I don't want to caveat this. God can save anybody at any point in life. It's just these are the things that happened that were moving us for where we were endowed by our Creator to the point where it's now big government. You're our God. Not me. Not not. I, I'm just saying as a whole. That's kind of what's happened. Uh, Twenty-five. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature 
or the creation, more than the Creator, that would be Jesus Christ, who is blessed forever. Amen. Uh, if anybody knows anything about the hippie movements, if you ever had a tie-dye shirt or bell-bottom pants or some people like to wear the jeans with the holes in them, you know where that got its start? Well, it was the 60s. That's where the, you know, the hippies had a certain thing. But they also, a, a bigger issue that which is following along with was the free love movement. It, it didn't matter who your partner was. Now, I'm not saying they all did that, but that was pretty much the movement. You know, it was like a big family. Everybody all right with that? For the sake of time, I've got, I've got a brochure that's got uh, nine or ten of the big things that uh, fell into that. But we're down to about four minutes right now. I'm probably not going to get done anyway. But 26. For this cause, because they did that. Now remember, God judged them and then they went into this. Now it was male, female at the time. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Uh, and that was in 1970, 1980s. Uh, it was the lesbian movement uh, that was done within the feminists and the women's lib movement. Now, the uh, feminist women's lib, and I've got a handout on that, was a bigger movement, but they enveloped in uh, the lesbian movement with that. Everybody okay with that? Hopefully that's not uncomfortable. All right. To, to cover this adequately, I'm, I'm trying to lay out things that happened and it became, okay, okay. We can also throw that uh, Roe Wade was, was popped in there as well and it made abortion illegal. Or legal. It, it was never a law. It just said, okay, you have to have places for them to do this and if women want to do it, it's their choice. All right, Romans uh, 1 and 27. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the women, burned in their lust, one toward another. Is anybody seeing how these steps have happened in America? That's just not America. It's other countries. It's actually kind of the whole world as well, and how it, things have gradually moved down. They burned in their lust, one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and it receiving in themselves the recompense of their error which was meet or proper so there was the gay movement men with men I remember that's exactly what I was going to cover uh, AIDS etc which primarily targeted uh, male and male I just got the wristwatch and I've already got one okay Romans 1 and 28 and 32 and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a, re a reprobate mind, a mind abandoned in sin, lost to virtue of grace, to do those things which are not convenient or proper. Uh, let me read one thing here real quick. I'm going to run a few minutes over, Dave. Don't hurt me. I didn't know this, but in 99, I'm sorry, in 2000, Bill Clinton declared June as gay and lesbian pride. Didn't know that. I thought I thought it was done under President Obama. And President Barack Obama recently expanded, this was wrote back in uh, 2011, uh, recently expanded the observance by designating June as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender pride month for the entire month. I, and I, I'm just trying to establish where the country is going and where we're letting our governing officials take us. Again, God can save anybody at any walk of life. Anybody I've just talked about can be saved. They just have to be willing to believe that Jesus Christ died for their sins, that he was buried and he was resurrected on the third day. If you believe and trust that, you are justified just as if you've never sinned before. And you could still be living in that lifestyle and be saved. Yes, you can. Why? Because he took away all sin. Past, present, future. You can be living in that and be saved. If you truly trust it. Now, I like to say this. It's not that God 
pulls himself away from people that are in these kind of situations. It's people pull themselves away from God. God never left. God loves everybody, believers, unbelievers. He loves everybody. But he wants them to get saved. Because he knows what's going to happen if they don't get saved. All right, let me, let me turn this because I got a bunch of notes. I'm, I'm not going to read the notes. I'm just going to finish up uh, starting with Romans 1 and 29. <clears throat> Being filled with all unrighteousness. You know, we've gone through these other steps. All these things that, you know, people have fallen down as, as a country. From, from signing that Declaration of Independence where we're endowed by our Creator, now it's being filled with all unrighteousness. These, these are the pronouns for the people that are un, unbelieving. Fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters. This one blows me away. Inventors of evil things. Is there not enough evil things to do in this world that you got to go make something new that's even more evil? Well, the answer is yes disobedient to parents and you know that one's always thrown in there i'm like wow that seems kind of like a watered down one here but but if you don't get it right as kids it's it's a hard push uphill without understanding covenant breakers without natural affection implacable unmerciful who knowing even after all this they they know the true judgment of god who knowing the judgment of god that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do. They don't want to do it by themselves. They want to find some people and round them up so we can have a group of people doing this thing. Now, I've exceeded my time. I wanted to go into some positive things. But we don't have to worry about it. We just have to understand there's spiritual warfare going on and that the devils can't cross the bloodline. If you're saved, they cannot cross that bloodline. Unfortunately, we have friends and family that are not saved. And you have to look out for them. I try to do my best to share it with them. And if they're not going to accept it, I, at least I can move on and know that I've uh, shared it with them. Anyways, can, can you all see that kind of where we went Amen. and through time and how we're in the kind of, I like to call it, we're in verse 32. And we've been there for a couple of years. And we're just waiting for God's timing to get on the calling out of here. We like to call it the rapture, getting our perfect body and being called up into the clouds because we're not going to be here for those seven years. We were not made for wrath. Unfortunately, the unbelievers, they got to go through it. That's all I got. Thank you.